If you're wondering whether to learn Java in 2024, you probably have a ton of questions swirling in your head. And it's frustrating not to land on a clear yes or no. Although there are important factors in deciding to learn Java, the choice doesn't have to take forever. What's important for you now is to pick a programming language and start learning the skills that will transform you into the developer you're capable of. To help you decide whether Java is the right language for you, in this video I share the three most crucial factors for you to consider, which is the exact framework I would use if I could undo my 13 years professional Java experience and start again from scratch. At the end of the video, you'll have more clarity than ever on whether to learn Java this year. Starting with, projects are the whole point of writing code. Google Maps, Spotify, Airbnb, all these applications transformed how people live by automating tedious manual processes. How does this relate to Java? Well, the types of projects you want to build may influence your choice of programming language. The good news for anyone considering Java is it's a versatile language that can be used for many types of project. I've personally written Java software for news websites, payment systems, Facebook games, back office business tools, and e-commerce stores. Maybe you have a desire to build online role-playing games. You can use Java to write back-end code to coordinate player interactions and save progress to a database. So consider what types of project you want to build and figure out if Java is a good fit. Of course, if you're just getting started with development, it's not always obvious what languages are suited to what types of projects. For example, with ChatGPT, we can ask a question if you were interested in desktop applications, list well-known desktop applications written in Java. And the fact that the ones coming back here are related to Java development itself, Eclipse, NetBeans, IntelliJ Idea, might indicate that Java isn't the most popular choice for writing desktop applications. But let's say you're interested in getting into back-end development, you might ask, is Java known as a good language for building back-end REST APIs? And in fact, that's one of Java's sweet spots because of frameworks and libraries, performance, the ecosystem, and so on. So try to see whether you can come up with some examples of projects written in Java for the types of projects that you're interested in getting into. What types of project might Java not be suitable for? Well, if you're focused only on building interactive front ends for websites, consider JavaScript instead. Or you can start with Java, then learn other languages to become a full stack developer who builds different types of projects. Or maybe you just don't have a preference, that's fine. In fact, that's how I started learning Java. Over time, as you work on various projects, you can learn what excites you and begin to focus on that. Either way, I guarantee you won't want to write a single line of Java code without first understanding how this next factor relates to your future development career. Pay is essential to sustain any long-term career as a developer. For beginners, I recommend earning and learning by getting a job. As long as you demonstrate basic programming skills and a desire to learn, you can land a junior development role where you'll quickly pick up more advanced knowledge. But how does this relate to your decision to learn Java this year? Before learning Java, as with any programming language, you need to work out if it pays. That depends on the availability of jobs for people in your situation. And there are two main things that influence that, so let's break them down. The first is location. I used to live in London and could apply to jobs at many companies that chose to base themselves in this busy tech hub. If you live in a big city, there'll likely be more entry-level roles available than in a small town. Of course, remote working is possible, but junior developers are more likely to be asked to work from the office to get up to speed fast. Once you have some experience, it's then easier to negotiate working from home. The second thing is citizenship. At a previous job, bosses realise they can hire cheaper developers from other countries in the same time zone. All this shows that your job search isn't limited to companies in your home country. There are opportunities to work for foreign companies remotely or even to relocate. You'll need to check the regulations of whatever country appears on your passport to see what's possible. So ChatGPT is incredibly useful to sift through all this regulation and we can ask questions like, are there any countries a UK citizen like me can work from without additional permits? This might give you some ideas of places that you can go to or work from that you didn't know before. Like I didn't know that UK citizens can work in Ireland. So see what opportunities are open to you and by taking advantage of them, you can increase the likelihood of landing your first job in Java. 
Now you can combine your location and citizenship prospects with your project preference from the previous factor and start browsing job boards. You may need to apply to dozens of roles to land your first job, so if you find less than 10 suitable ones, it's a red flag. If you're watching this video though, you probably live in a country with many junior Java roles. So if I was based in London, here in the UK, I can just go to Google and search for Junior Java Jobs London. And we can see here, saying there's 100 jobs, look through, see how recently the jobs were posted. Two days ago, Junior Developer, Junior Core Java Engineer, four days ago. By making sure there are enough jobs open to you, you can begin learning Java with the confidence that you'll eventually get paid for all your hard work. That is, as long as you take into account this third and final factor, without which you'll never go beyond beginner-level Java developer. Building projects you care about and earning money by writing Java code means nothing if you don't have passion for Java itself. Not having passion means you won't enjoy writing Java code, so you'll never have the motivation to improve your skills and advance your career. Fortunately, for many of us, passion is nurtured on the journey towards our goals. It's likely that if you learn Java and land a development role in a team of other Java developers, you'll be in the perfect environment to get in the groove of writing Java. That's what happened to me anyway. Continuously solving problems with code pushed me to explore parts of language I wouldn't otherwise care about. But some developers are more opinionated. There may be aspects of a language that they can't tolerate, while others see those same negatives as a strength. To make sure you'll enjoy both learning and working with Java, consider these common reasons some developers dislike this language. Java is more verbose than other languages like JavaScript or Kotlin. Java is statically typed, which means every variable must have a type like string or integer, unlike JavaScript, which is dynamic. Java code must be compiled before it's run, unlike JavaScript, which can be immediately executed in a browser. And seemingly a small thing, but Java needs a semicolon to end every statement. For some, this requirement is an unnecessary restriction, but for others, it makes code easy to read. Personally, I find Java to be a great language for writing clear, maintainable code, the kind that's essential for companies that prioritize reliable and robust software. Now you know the importance of project pay and passion in learning Java, it's over to you to make your choice. Let me know in the comments what you decide, and I'll see you in the next one.